conversation. Creating conversation. We got Devontae Lacey here. Um, we here at Al Davies, place where we both put a, a lot of while a lot of time in this gym, uh, right here in Tacoma, Washington. We just wanted to get Devontae on here, talk about his journey. You know what I'm saying? And ask you a couple questions. Appreciate you for coming on here, bro. Thanks for having me. Bro. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man. Being coming from Tacoma. Like as as you have ventured off in, in your career, um, how has coming from Tacoma been a part of who you are on the court? Well, I think me what I what I had to go through in Tacoma, like you know, facing all that challenges and stuff, made me become you know kind of impeccable to the things that I was going to face at that level or anywhere else I ventured because I know Tacoma was who I am and I know Tacoma's never broke. So why should I break in moments where, you know, adversity is going to hit? So yeah. That's how it like, translated for me at least. That's how it got me through. That's where I seen it in my life. What do people say that about Tacoma when you go to different like places in the state or <laughs> wherever wherever you go and you tell them, oh yeah, I'm from Tacoma, what they, how do they choose you? Come on, man, they think we straight <laughs> thugs. They think we're straight from the streets. Yeah. Where, you know? I mean, it is it's different. Yeah. It's different than you know Eastern Washington, where you know you you really the minority over there. But over here, they think we're just straight thugs from the city. You know. But yeah. They don't understand what what it's like being here, so can't really front them for that. But yeah, this is how they believe. But it is what it is. Yeah, definitely. I feel like because we were both on the on the same side of the state. We went to school. I was at Eastern. You got Wazoo, um, and. Uh, it was yeah. We I feel like just every time we mention where we were from at any point or any other place in the state, they automatic yeah automatically stereotyped as you know what I'm saying just it, exactly like somebody that's our age you know what I'm saying that dresses the way we dress or talks the way we talk we're, we're something that we're not. So uh, it's it's good to see people that are our age connect and come together that that really are about something that are doing something positive with their life you know what I'm saying so. Um, huge. Uh, cause you gotta think, man. Kids these days are looking up to somebody. They gotta look up to somebody. Yeah. And if we're doing it, coming from the same spots that they did, with playing in the same gyms they played in, they can see it's possible. Exactly. So as long as I mean, you, look at you finished college, but you didn't do it hoop wise. You did it academic wise. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, There's, but we have to be those leaders to give them that path to go. There. Exactly. At the end of the day, it's all about giving game to. The next yeah, homie coming up, exactly. Game. So, I mean, and, and we already know because we've been in touch with seeing who paved the way for us for and laid the format for us to succeed. Yeah. And we, it's about remaining humble at the end of the day. Yeah. But it, it is who we are. It's not hard to be that way. It's because we was raised the right way, in the same exactly in the same spot. What was your worst game in college? My worst. Game worst college. game. Worst game in college. Wow. To be honest, the worst game I always think about was we were playing UW. Uh -huh. I got some new Kobe's for the game too. Yeah. The news. They had the snakeskin joints on, so I'm like, I'm about to break them out. Okay, so okay. Red. Yeah. I'm like, who are we? Bruh. When I tell you I missed 8 3, that was 0 for 8, like 0 for 7, 0 for 8 from 3. And the last three I missed, it was to tie it up or to not take the lead with them 45 seconds left. Sheesh. So, Play wasn't even, the thing cold part was the play wasn't even for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I was like, I'm here. And I had already <laughs> missed seven, so. Yeah. Why not now? You know what I'm saying? Hey. Nah, that's real. It is what it is. Hey, you got you, you missed the shots you don't take. That's how I feel. Nah. I mean, back to that. You uh you the record holder for Wazoo three pointers made in a career. Yeah. Yeah, did that. Tacoma. Over. Over some people that are, yeah, yeah in the talking about legends, you're talking about yeah, Law, um, Clay Thompson, Clay exactly in the finals right now. Exactly Taylor Rochester, people forget about, but he was a great. 
Rochester. But I mean, yeah, I was blessed. No, nah, yeah. So, so uh, I guess the the offer, the offer seven. Cause I just wanted to know. I never really, yeah. I never really yeah, knew that was that because it was yeah, you dub, yeah. yeah I had to be nasty. Yeah. Man, a couple games where I left the gym and go straight to the gym because it was we played so bad. Yeah. But we had some bad games, but that one stuck out, man. <laughs> Creating conversation, and this is the social media segment. I think our first topic of conversation is going to be how has social media affected uh, this generation? I feel like uh, social media has affected this generation um, in a way that people are more communicative behind keyboards. So I feel like we lost some face to face communication. Um, and, and what we have going on in this world right now, uh, we got cyber thugs. <laughs> we got we got people that'll say anything behind uh, a Twitter feed, but we don't know how. We don't have people that know how to enunciate themselves. Or we don't have people that. Yeah, we don't have people that know how to. Okay, we, <laughs> we can edit that. Back. And that's why. Can edit back. Exactly Thanks what I mean. Media. I'm used to sliding into the end. Okay. Cool. You said that's spell check. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 okay. yeah. How you feel like it's affected this generation? I mean, it's a it's a negative and a positive aspect. If people really look at it, they can see that they'll find yourself in their social media because you're only going to follow what you like, you know, follow what you know. I think it's blurred lines though too because I think sometimes it, it, it confuses people on who they are because it gives you all of these completely unrealistic options that are right. fabricated and people start to believe that this is real life for most people but they have to understand that's exactly what it is, the media. Just like everything in life, usually negativity usually reigns supreme right. on whatever ends up, you know what I mean, whatever industry or whatever. Um, but I know when I first got on Twitter, I was like, this is about to be dope. P. Diddy's one that got me on Twitter. I used to look up to him a lot, you know what I mean? Businessman, could promote anything, could market anything, uh, real energetic. I was like, and he, I always saw I am Diddy. Okay, I'm gonna follow him, first person I followed. And I was thinking like, yeah, I'm gonna be able to get to see what he does on a daily. I'm gonna see how he talks. Like, cause we're not talking about the news, we're talking about directly from his, his thoughts. And, as soon as I got on, I was like, this dude's just trying to sell me Ciroc and Bad Boy uh, 20, 20 year anniversary albums. And you know what I'm saying? So so I was hurt by that, but I, I also followed a DJ from Spokane, um, Jackie Brown. Um, and she was dope because she gave me exactly exactly what she was doing in her in her uh, business, which I always I was always interested in being a DJ, but I ain't gonna be a DJ because my name is DJ. So um, that was a joke. DJ, DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just thought it was DJ too. I, I want to be DJ so bad. Though. But but I thought it was dope that she would give insight on how it is to be a DJ. Like she's having a bad DJ day, she would she would let you know and it'd be like, wow. So so with me when I got on, I was kind of like, I'm just gonna give the exact my life on Twitter and stuff like that, and that's what I did. And uh, I don't think that there's too many people that do give you the, but I'm gonna give you the good and the bad. Yeah. Uh, there's not too many people that do do that. But if we were to do that more, I think that it would have more positive yeah. uh, aspects to social media. But people, it's easier to fabricate a lifestyle that you don't really live. Um, and, and, and sometimes you you gotta be you gotta be comfortable with yourself to to put out the negative. For real, another positive social media has not necessarily coming from an individual standpoint, but. Um, in the in the nineties, we were only we were only exposed to what CNN, headline news, uh, TBS, all the major uh, wanted to, to wanted give to, to us. Give to so if something's going wrong. on, yeah, something's going on in, in Antarctica. That, nothing going on in there, but <laughs> if something's going on in Angola, exactly yeah. we're not going to see it know. unless they have exactly. a reason to give it. We know they have an agenda. Mm, exactly. So now you have independent bloggers and things like that. Mm. So. If, if a story's big, like for instance, there's a there's a man I want to say somewhere in South America, a black man who's a who has a cure for anything, Doctor Sebi. Do, Sebi, and I just been hooked to, hit to that off of Facebook. Somebody posted it. I did my own research. Now in my mind, I'm like, hey, if it goes down, right. 
I'm going down the holler at Dr. Sammy, man. But I mean, just going with what you're saying, like the Black Lives Matter movement wouldn't have not be anywhere near the same if we were only getting our information from the the new the new sources that are on TV. And stuff. The reason that we like you know are so caring and compassionate about those kind of things is because we're getting it raw from people who are actually there, who are actually just telling us like it is. How do you take that into cyberbullying? Right. Cyberbullying. Um, no, when I people think, yeah, when it takes it into a you know they're, they're taking what we're you know what it is and using it in a negative aspect. Like I don't like to see, you see all stuff people, on there now right. because they put negative propaganda. stuff on there. Yo, right. cyberbullying is real. Cyberbullying is real. Anytime that you, anytime <laughs> that you like, go on Twitter and stuff Somebody like that and you click like something that's important, you'll like click on there and look wait, at the, wait, the wait, replies. Wait, wait, wait. Like, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Explain, explain. Explain, explain cyberbullying because like me, if somebody's saying something about me on the internet, I can log off. So tell me well, how your ego. You, you, have to, you have to realize. Yeah. Yeah. If, you realize if you're a 15 year old yeah. right, that's school, right? Yeah. Say you're the overweight kid, and you go to school, and all day <laughs> you're ridiculed, right? And then you come home, <laughs> and like, way. typically because your social circles aren't very strong, you're gonna be reclusive. You're gonna play video games. You're gonna get on the internet, and when you log on to your Facebook, you go in your inbox. And they're saying, hey, fatty, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So you right. can't exactly. escape it. Can't escape Back that. in the day, you could leave school, come home to a cohesive family unit, and be free of that. You know what I'm saying? And you knew that you didn't have to deal with that until tomorrow at 7 a.m. for the next eight hours. But but now, or, you know, or whenever you know, someone says, you like, you're the fat kid and it has 50 reasons. Not everyone you know? is, is that strong will. This, this is a lot of communication as well. It's a lot of communication. Like, well. you know lot of communication. Like, okay, if, if there's cyberbullying going on, shouldn't there be somebody to come and tell them, like, hey, listen, kid, but you I mean, don't have to log on to see that. But here's the thing. You shouldn't have to log off because people are picking on you. You shouldn't have to not be able to get on the internet because when you do get on the internet, people are going to do that. One thing that I don't like is when people will be online and they be like, why are you tripping? It's just Facebook. Why are you tripping? It's just Twitter. Like, this is still like, this is still life. It's coming from your profile. You're exactly. a real person. You're so real what's the person. difference between you saying this over the, if you say that over the phone to me, I would be tripping. So why, why would I not be tripping? Now you're saying this and however many followers or whatever you got are seeing it. This is hurtful. Right. It's yeah. a social media instrument. Like, and it, it's just like and talking. It changes your emotions, you know what I'm saying? And it causes this reaction out of you. Like, like what are you ran by, I ask? You know what I'm saying? If that you, if you allow somebody, if you allow something somebody says on the internet, you can't even see, you ain't even met this person, ain't shook his hand, he ain't bought mm -hmm. you a drink. I let this man piss me off and ruin my entire day behind Twitter? Yeah. I gotta look. You know, I think that it's. I think it's that absurd. I think it's that absurd until it like really happens to you, and you don't have that backbone exactly. that a lot of people have. All right, all right, we flared up. <laughs> we flared <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm gonna switch it up though. I'm gonna ask the top of this. Um, what type of effect does social media have on relationships oh, yeah. in this era, 2015? Uh oh. Uh -oh. Well, First off, they promote having side chicks, Man. side niggas, all that stuff. Like, it's okay it's to be cool. unfaithful. Yeah. When back in the day, people were with their people from high school or middle school. And, like, there's rarely any relationships like that. You have professional athletes, you have singers, you have actors, actresses, like, that they get thousands and thousands of followers a day. Not just, like, this week I got a thousand followers. No, a yeah. day from all around the world. They travel all around the world that they can't take their significant others every time. And they have people hitting them up. Like say they follow someone back because social media is a part of their job because it's a part of the industry. Yeah. And if you want your fan base to grow, social media is the fastest way to do it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they have people hitting them up and DMing them and okay. retweeting and constantly stalking them mm -hmm. and all that. So they're gonna get attention from someone or they're gonna see someone that might catch their attention. What type of man or what type of female does it take to be with somebody that has that type of Ooh, that has that type strong, of attention strong minded, on you? A strong minded person. Yeah, a strong, a strong minded person. <laughs> yeah. Someone who's secure Not about me. themselves. Mm. You can be as secure and as you want. You just gotta be cool with you. <laughs> and I'm secure with myself. Period. Wait, no, wait, 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 I said, I don't know, you can be as strong minded as you want. I think in that type of situation, you just gotta be realistic and be cool. <laughs> yeah. You're being cheated. Are you thinking, that's, so that's you're saying that you all those guys are cheating? But that's a problem if it's, with if it's the being generation. Because at the end of the day, let's keep it real. Hey, yo, I don't know. But, but 
I mean, Michael Jackson made Dirty Diana way before Twitter came out. So it's not like this is something that's new. It What's provides the difference? so many distractions, too. Like, as soon as your man touches his little Instagram emoji, whatever, and then he man, starts scrolling and it's naked bitches, naked this, oh naked that. There's mm -hmm. this, there's that. It's, it's like you can't even that. focus on just one person <laughs> because there's always something constantly drawing your attention somewhere else. Even if you don't actually go all the way for it, you're just distracted. Constant. You're not all in ever. You can't be because you're like, whoa, look at all these other options. So and do you like, delete it? So do you delete it? Yes. <laughs> Unless Ooh. it's making you money. To me. To what me? is it really well, for? Well, okay. So, so if, you, if, if, if the female knows that it's a part of your job or this is your business, this is how you promote. But how many job. people is it really about? I'm not, job? But I'm asking yeah, about the ones that do question. that do do it that is aware that. And you gotta be okay with you, that. <laughs> How was it playing in a Pac-12 coming up? Cause that's everybody's dream in Tacoma. I want to be Pac-12. You know, I beat D1 first of all, and then dream really is Pac-12 or like anywhere like one of the main schools. But Pac-12 is it. So, how was that living in that, taking that journey? That's, it was dope, man. Cause growing up, I looked up to the people before me, which was Avery and Avery was yeah. in Texas. Mm -hmm. Which was, you know, then you can see you could do it. You can see you yeah. go D1. Then you see IT go at UW and Abdul at UW, and you can see it too. But the difference was, Pac-12, you you stay home essentially on the West Coast. You're yeah. Your family all can see all your games on the West Coast because mm -hmm. of the network. Yeah. With Avery, we couldn't see him. So I, I mean, to play in the Pac-12 is to be someone that can be on scene you know, on TV and then have my name in Tacoma, Washington, right next to us. It's huge. Talk about next journey, what you're doing now and, and preparing for the draft. How, how's that process? Man, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I always got to tell myself not everybody experiences it. Yeah. Know? So I try to take it in for what it is and, you know, try to do it the right way. And I'm just going back and forth between cities um, and just trying to, essentially, this is a job interview. So yeah. trying to go through this job process and trying to get a check. Man, at the end of the day, it's about getting some money mm -hmm. and just, you know, but once you get the money, it's about what you do with it. So, yeah. You know, it's all, it's all comes with the territory. Yeah, for sure. When, uh, let's talk about the money. Um, let's talk about the money. Ha. I was, I didn't say one word. <laughs> I did I did all the motions and didn't say one word. But uh, when you, when, when somebody makes it, I'm gonna I'm go on there, I'm gonna go on the record and say this. I don't even, I don't respect Ahmad Rashad or Bobby Moore, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 just, be, just because maybe I'm ignorant to the point where I haven't heard nothing that he does for Tacoma, but I've never heard him like do any type of give back. You know what I'm saying? So that is cold. and and, and I I don't you know it, it's like when you when you're in a space like that, I feel like it's 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 second nature to want to give back to who you give back to. So when we talk about the money and boom, we rich, we living, we getting money. Uh, uh, we in the club because I'm uh, living with you now and you taking me everywhere and uh, we made it. And uh, but like, look, when we when we, when you, when you do that, what what do you want to do in Tacoma? Like, how, how do you see yourself potentially? You know what I'm saying? I don't want you putting that on the record right now. Like, oh, boom, I'm open this. But like, well, how, how, how can you see yourself getting back to the team? Well, my senior year, I had to write a, a proposal, a business proposal for the whole year. So, and I, I made a business plan. And what I want to do is create a center for just like a boys and girls club, essentially type. But we stress the academic success rate. Yeah. And we go to the college enrollment rate, which is bad for the inner city compared to more yeah. suburban areas. So, I want to devise a plan where people will be exposed to the resources that they don't have. So I'll give them academic advisors, um, computers. Some people don't have computers to do applications. Yeah. Whatever their setback is, I want to fulfill that need mm -hmm. so that everybody in my program goes to college. And once they get there, they have success because they're ready. So yeah. I want to do something like that. I'll essentially, in the long run, I got to get my, I'm going to go back to school and get my master's. Yeah. So that's what I want to do. So we'll yeah. see how it goes. I want to play as long as I can, too. So. Yeah, I feel you. I, said, I mean, it, it sounds like, uh, you got, you really got your head on. We know that. Uh, yeah. But like, 
go, even when you say go back to school and get your masters, people aren't thinking like that. You know, some yeah. like some people's goal be okay. I'm gonna go to college, yeah. but I can attest to that. We I mean, when I first got there, I didn't want to. After college, I wanted to be at college for two years, go to the league. Yeah. But I got injuries and stuff, and just had to stay. And once I got, once I stayed, I was getting a degree. I'm like, man, I can do a master's too. Mm -hmm. Come back and be a GA, a grad assistant yeah. for a team after I'm done playing for how many other years? Because I made so many connections with coaches and stuff. Yeah. I can get a GA spot and get my master's paid for, mm -hmm. and that's just more money. That's just, that's just, you know, what I'm saying, hard work pays off. And exactly. It does when it comes to school. Creating conversation, and I got my man, Adrian Cooper. Adrian, Adrian, making music, yep. the brand. Let's talk about that. Um, what does making music the name? Where did that come from? Um, how do I put this? Uh, <laughs> so I had a family friend that had some sort of legacy uh, he wanted me to take on. Mm -hmm. Actual music, and yeah. I in turn turn that into like a ice skate, a snowboard, mm -hmm. and kind of applied it to that. So in a sense, when you skateboard, you're really passionate about that. That's like your music. Yeah. So this is your music. Your artistry. Which in yeah. turn could be skateboard, snowboarding, basketball, like mm -hmm. yourself, Anything. and just kind of apply it on a, uh, on a broader spectrum. What did they want to leave you as far as making music was? was uh, it well. Guitar, was it? It was Singer. just. It was just basically taking on making music. Like mm -hmm. I want you to make music yeah. and live by that type of thing. Yeah. And he ended up actually passing, colon mm -hmm. cancer, okay. super young, and I just turned it into a business. Didn't know that it was gonna be that. It was like yeah. here, like here, just want yeah. you to be about this, and it became a skateboard slash print company slash whatever. So okay. How, however you see fit. Yeah. So, so you get jack of all trades pretty much a little bit pretty much okay. um i i see it more as uh, a network for just being an artist mm -hmm. and the simplest way is to put art on t-shirt and put it out there for people to wear yeah. as we're just all the homies hanging out yeah. and whatever else and we get a cool idea we throw it on our t-shirt okay instead of going into zoomies or trying yeah. to figure out like how do we get this yeah we made our way and we made t-shirts ourselves okay so. So do you do design work as well? You come up with some of the uh, logos? I come up with some of that. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of times, just like anything else, when you're hanging out with homies, they yeah. shoot an idea or you're just shooting a shit and you're like, oh, that would be a cool idea. And then either I can make it mm -hmm. or because I'm only so skilled, I have friends that or that artists are, that can do yeah. some more extravagant stuff. That's what's up. That's a blessing, man, having so, people in place that could really help you out. And, and that's the whole thing is just yeah. trying to make it more about everybody else and not just me. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. let's talk about your the people that you surround yourself with and um, how they do affect you. Like you said, you, you bounce ideas, you do stuff. Is there anything else that they do that helps you make making music right now? Um, That's kind of a tough one. Uh, just cause, so I run a print shop as well, mm -hmm. which base, that's how this company became. Yeah. And so a lot of times um, I'll be influenced with pretty much whatever's relevant. So if it's just okay. some sort of like, it could be some music show or mm -hmm. something that I read in a paper yeah. or something else like that, and I just get a random idea and that's what I go from there. So I it could be anything, you yeah. know, it could, it's very sporadic. Yeah, and I can tell in your clothing, like just looking at it, and you you let me know it's a skateboard slash snowboarding brand. But, but at, at the, the same, same time, time, you could look at another piece and you wouldn't even know. Exactly, like that. exactly. I, I try to gear it for for all genres and uh, make it not brand specific mm -hmm. or like scene specific. Yeah. More just like hey, or I, collective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A like collective of, of ideas, and it can be anything we want because we can do anything we want. How did making music get here in the store collab? Um, well, me and Ron Pittman, uh, if we want to go off that, uh, we have a print shop and we make clothing and that's our everyday thing and we basically want to showcase what we do and what better way is to start our own shop. So, me personally, even from a young age, I always wanted to do a shop, but 
Ron, he does with Rare Breed, which you guys will be able to see that here soon. Um, he showcases a little bit of everything plus more sports side. And then basically like, if you want to take it music where you got like this hip hop and rock, mm -hmm. you can have a nice melody of my style of stuff plus this. Mm -hmm. And then of course we're trying to network with everybody local. Yeah. Trying to do something because okay. it's really hard for people like us that come from nothing yeah. and try to put it out there like, you know, uh, your Nordstrom's trying to be the top dog. Mm -hmm. So we're coming together as like the collab to, you know, sell whatever yeah. that's gonna be. Put, put everybody, put everybody around you on with like the local brands. Yeah. Basically. And okay. then as, you know, I hate, you know, I hate to play off the whole collab thing, but basically it's us collaborating with these other people to be able to make ourselves successful, them successful, and it's not just us doing it by ourselves, yeah. it's doing it as a Every, community. Yeah, as a whole that's community. The, I think for me, that's the best thing to do. Exactly. What you been listening to? What gets you, what's your pre-game? What, what gets you, <clears throat> game time? I'm light-skinned. <laughs> So I, I go with the R&B route. <laughs> Nigga said I'm light skin. You know what it is. So, uh, uh, well, take take me there. R&B, R&B, what? What you? What's, who, uh, who you got? Bellinger. Oh, uh, okay. That's my guy. Yeah. I, rock I mean, obviously, every light skin listen to Cole. <laughs> so we can feel like we're still in the hip hop game. But yeah. Listening to R&B. Now I rock with Cole. I rock with Cole. That's my guy. Though. I rock with Cole. Tough though. Who you listen to? Uh, I listen to a lot of Usher, the old school. <laughs> like, like, uh. Confessions A701. Come on, man. <laughs> That's taking it back. Pretty Ricky. Oh, man. Pretty Ricky. Pretty. Hey, shout out to high school, man. <laughs> high school, Pretty Ricky was going crazy. Like, real life. Shout out to Pleasure Pete, man. It's crazy I don't have a bay right now. Let's talk about high school. When did you know your gang, boom, I'm at another level? I need, I need to really start seriously thinking about it. Taking, take, re, taking this really serious. I know you was real serious from the jump, but yeah. where you probably, feel was, oh. Probably where I feel like I could go to college was my 10th grade year when I was the first year I could play high school basketball and compete at that level when I was only in 10th grade. So yeah. I felt like, okay, I can do this again. I, I ain't gonna lie, y'all had a squad. Who's, who's, who's on Curtis my squad? 10th yeah, 10th grade year, we yeah, got um, Dom Will, mm -hmm. yeah, Darnell, yeah. Chad, the white boy went to Seattle U. Chad, I from mess with uh, Chad. Stan, Stan went to, uh, uh, Stan went to Central for football. Okay. But he dunked That's on Stags. We played Lincoln. Ah! Uh, uh, damn, Shay. And we had a squad, man, Marquise Dogs. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah, I Julie, remember. Julian that played with me. Yeah, Central. Shout out. Yeah, you guys, you guys had a squad. Like, high school, high school was fun just because you guys was in the SPSL, we was in the Narrows, but you guys still had good competition and played teams in the Narrows in Tacoma, too. So, it was, like, people don't hoop is real life, life out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's different when you go to, like, the South or... Yeah. Midwest. Yeah, that's or, that. that's something you did. That's something you did. Friday, especially when like there was talent. I remember going to see Marvin Williams at Foss. Yeah. That was one of my first like high school games that was crazy. We sold out pack. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, the at Foss? Yeah. I was there. Bramerton? I was there. When he dunked on, he dunked on Foster. <laughs> he broke his, he broke his yeah. yeah, I was there. Yeah, and then I, he pulled his shorts up, went to the crowd. Right. Yeah, bro, that was the house there. That was that was like one of my livest like, oh. This is real life. I used to uh, watch all, 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 all the all the false games when I was like elementary to middle school. So like when they won state, Solomon and Keenan and Mark Axton, I was watching all those games. Like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> and that was when like false was like really popular. Oh yeah, Holt. yeah. Man, he really was. was yeah. Him and Leonard. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the thing about it. These people, these these 
older cats from Tacoma that have paved the way for us and hooped and been legends in their own right. Coming up, they, we was fans. We don't settle for anything less. People that we surround ourselves with don't surround, don't settle for anything less. So that's really the message that we were trying to push out here is really achieve what you want to achieve and push yourself. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're a product of somebody who's already done that and, and you're reaping its own the benefits and you gonna do is, man, just believe it. Yeah. If you believe in it and work towards it, if you believe in it, you have to put enough work to go along with your belief. And that's when that's when they say dreams happen. So Yeah. yeah it's easy. You that's just gotta start. It's, it's easy to say it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it ain't it ain't easy to do though. Yeah, but we can do it, man. We can. You putting in their hours, you keep putting in them work, you putting that work, you putting that work. Just yeah, easy. we gonna get there. Just do it the right way. You just gotta stay humble, bro. Easy. You already yeah, know. Get Hell yeah. Shout out to you, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Good looking. Coming you know on. You know? And we out here, man. We out here, man. My seat walk in the hills, man. Uh, we chilling, man. We, we books and learning. Okay. Kill. Kill. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I respect it, man. And you, I found out a lot of the times people, people, people really put out a lot of the songs.